Welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we've got the 2020, 2021 Kia Seltos. This is all new for this year, as in this car didn't exist before. And basically all but one trim of it <clears throat> is all wheel drive. This one is the SX with the turbo gas direct injection engine. It's a 1.6 liter. I'll put the power numbers up on the screen because I don't know those off the top of my head, but has a little more torque than it does horsepower, which is unusual for something of this size. And even though it's got less than 200 torque, 200 horsepower, it moves pretty well. Transmission is a seven speed dual clutch automatic in this particular trim. If you get the two liter non-turbo just a naturally aspirated engine then you get a cvt i believe um, the all-wheel drive system is the dynamax and they claim it has torque vectoring which i guess technically it does but it does torque vectoring by brake so it can transfer power forward and rear using the all-wheel drive system it's just basically got a clutch pack right in front of the rear differential it does have a standard rear differential and then to do torque vectoring, it breaks the inside rear wheel on the corner to help pull you around the corner. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. Get a look at this little turbo engine. And sorry, I had to leave it running so the headlights will be on, but it does not pass the fog light test. You have to have the headlights on in order for the fog lights to be on. So there's your little 1.6 liter turbo transversely mounted decent amount of space in there doesn't seem too tight let's go over the window sticker real quick before we get into some of the other features so this thing runs under 30,000 as it's equipped now so it's roughly it's about a thousand dollars more than the chr i had last week and so much more nicely appointed key has really been doing a good job with that and i really enjoyed this vehicle a lot more than i did the chr chr wasn't bad it was just gutless it seemed like there was no power there and this one kind of gets up and goes all right here we are so total price on this 29,000, I don't know if that's focusing, 485. And it has a 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder with 195 torque, foot pounds of torque, and 175 horsepower with a seven speed quick shift dual clutch automatic transmission and torque vectoring all wheel drive with a center differential lock. And then a whole bunch of other stuff. The only options are this, on this are the paint, which is a two tone star bright yellow with the black roof and the carpeted floor mats. So everything else you see in here is standard, and that is actually quite a few features. So you do get wireless charging, and that's this top tray. It's probably hard to see on video there. And multiple USB ports. It's not the most, but it's not the least. And then the 12 volt outlet there. You do have three drive modes, which are normal, smart, and sport. In sport mode, you see these lines over here on the side that popped up for just a second, those red lines. I believe that's the boost from the turbo. I'm not 100% sure on that. Heated seats, looks like there's another button blanks there, maybe for cooled seats or something else. Um, downhill assist, and that's the center differential lock, which it's, there's no center differential. It's just that clutch pack in front of the rear differential. And so when you lock it, there's still a chance it could slip because it's just a multi-plate wet clutch. And then it has the auto hold and the parking brake there. And it has auto stop start, which you can turn on and off. It does have lane keep assist, that's traction control, and you can hold it down. Just hit it once real quick for traction control, hold it down for traction control and stability control. And it does have, I don't know, plenty of pages, whatever. We don't need to go through all this stuff, but does give you a decent amount of information there. 
I like the screen. I mean, it does stick up out of the dash, but it doesn't block your view of the windshield at all. It's a nice clear screen. The rear view camera is really clear. It's not bad at all. And the audio, it's a Bose audio system. It sounds pretty good. Looks like someone went through and punched all the speakers, but that's just their design. They have that little, I don't know, triangular look all over it. No sunroof or anything in this particular trim, but that's great for me. I'm not a huge fan of those anyway. The small center armrest, there's it's just empty in there. Uh, no USB ports or anything else in there. Let's go ahead and climb in the back. So roomy enough in here. When you leave with the key, it'll turn off the vehicle in a half an hour, which is interesting. I guess that's a good feature. One USB port in the back, one little pocket there. At least you do have vents. Cup holders are here. And that's about it. And you got grab handles and your lights, which are pretty bright. And then down here, someone's sucker stick. Overall, it's not bad if you have four adults. Once you get into five adults, it's a little tight there in the center, but it can be done for short drives. And let's move to the rear hatch. So it has this cover, easy to remove, you just pop that off. And just a big open basic cargo area. I'm not sure what this step here is for. I imagine there's some sort of shelf or something you can put in there or maybe it's you pull this out and put it up there on top I'm not sure so there's your spare tire and you pull this cover all the way out to get to it and there's a little bit of storage under there um, maybe you throw your set of jumper cables and I don't know uh, a couple of tools or whatever down in there not a ton and then when you fold these seats the levers up here on the top and it's much easier from the, the second row to do but you can see they're not flat so there's a step there about uh, a little under six inches so you don't have a flat load floor there's no folding those seats and laying in the back comfortably um, fitting bigger items like i said this does come all the way off so you can get that out of your way if you have bigger taller items but still there's not a ton of space there with that bump in the middle it does have that little roof rack but you don't get any cross members And there we go. For this next clip coming up, I'm trying to test out the torque vectoring system. So as you corner, it should break the inside rear wheel to help pull you around the corner a little better. And that's what I'm testing here. I just want to make that clear before we move into the next clip. All right, so we'll guide through here a little bit fast. Looks like I'm pretty good on the angles here. Yeah, we're good. So, and it starts to slide and then pulls it in. Starts to slide. And I didn't really feel it pull it in as much on that. Maybe it's the sport mode. It does less aggressive with the braking. Let's try one more here. So I think the problem is, as you corner, this thing lands enough that it unloads the rear inside tire. And so even though it can apply the brake to help with torque vectoring on that rear inside wheel, it's kind of lifting a little bit and unloading it. So there's not enough weight there to be able to have that braking effect work real well. Thanks for watching Engine Adventures review of the 2021 Kia Seltos. It's a fun little car to drive, pretty peppy engine, gets up and goes, and great overall. I'd recommend it if you're looking in the sub 30,000 price range. I like this a little bit more than some of its competitors. And if you liked what you saw, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down, but make sure and comment, let me know why. And be sure to subscribe for more 
reviews and off-road videos and have a great day.